Hi. We are going to look at the histology of the spinal cord. Uh, I'm laughing because I was thinking about doing the whole central nervous system. Then I realised when I can talk for half an hour about the blood vessels, that's not a good idea. So we'll look at the spinal cord today and then we'll do cerebrum, cerebellum in the future. I found some slides. Um, but again, this is going to be a gentle look at the spinal cord to see what it looks like. We will look at grey matter and white matter. We'll see that it looks a little bit similar to some things that we've seen before and a little bit different and we'll talk about the parts, but it's not going to be in the greatest neuroanatomical detail because believe it or not, there is more detail than I will talk about. But I'm, all right, let, let's just do the thing, all right? So here is the first section that we're going to be looking at. So this is a, a tiny little bit of spinal cord. Um, there's my ruler up against it, so we can see the sort of size we're looking at here. Actually, it's not that tiny, is it? Um, but that's the, that's the whole spinal cord. I'm not going to be able to fit that in one view on my microscope. So bear in mind, that's what I'm moving around and looking at. Well, let's put it the other way around so it makes more sense. All right, where are we? So when we talk, uh, when we look at the spinal cord, oh man, that looks so, <laughs> that looks so cool. Got like a big butterfly in the middle there, haven't we? Um, like I say, that's the lowest power I can go to. Um, but when we look at the spinal cord, when we look at the nervous system, Instead of talking about anterior and posterior, we talk about dorsal and ventral. And that's largely because in humans, the, the central nervous system does that and then it changes at angle because of the way our eyes look forward instead of that away. So um, dorsal is the back, ventral is the front. And on this section, that's the dorsal side. Um, I know because of the gray matter I'm looking at here, uh, and this is the, the ventral side. Oh my word, look at the size of the neurons in there. They're ginormous. Um, so gray matter versus white matter. So that's the gray matter is in the middle. Um, in the spinal cord, gray matter is in the center, white matter is around the outside. And when we look at the brain, we'll find that it's the opposite way around. Uh, and the white matter is white because of course, uh, what we've got here is this looks, if we look at the white matter, this probably looks fairly familiar because we were looking at peripheral nerves uh, last week. Was it last week, right? Look at that. Doesn't that look similar to what we were looking at? What we're looking at there is we can see lots of axons running up and down the spinal cord that have been cut through. So we're looking at transverse sections through the axons of neurons. Remember, the neuron has got a cell body and then it sends off a very long process to somewhere else in the body and it sends action potentials, electrical signals along that axon to trigger something to happen at a distance or maybe it's coming the other way. If it's going away from the central nervous system, it's going to be a motor neuron. If it's sending action potentials back to the central nervous system, it's going to be a sensory neuron. Um, so the reason it looks like there's a lot of space in this section is because we have the axon in the middle, which is actually quite small, and it's surrounded by myelin. Uh, but in this case, the myelin is made by oligodendrocytes. We talked about Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system and then oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system. And just look how many axons, how many neurons there are. This is all white matter. So this is all information flowing up and down the spinal cord. Um, and the oligodendrocyte, maybe you've got one oligodendrocyte and it'll wrap myelin around, you know, three, four, five, six, seven nearby axons. But then, of course, because the axon is so long, you'll need lots of oligodendrocytes running the length of the spinal cord um, to cover the, the whole length of the axon. And we talked last time about how important the myelin is, and we talked about the diameter of axons and how the, the bigger, the larger the diameter of the axon, the faster action potentials can be propagated along the axon. We talked about the squid giant axon. And then we talked about how with myelin sheaths, you can have a much thinner, so a 
a much smaller diameter axon and have much faster action potentials um, running the length of the axon. So you can send action potentials faster in a smaller axon, which saves space and probably saves energy as well, um, by having myelin. And that means that if you have a neurodegenerative disease where the myelin is lost, then these neurons become unable to send action potentials most of the time. Um, we can see a little bit of green in there. So the green, remember, is going to be showing us the connective tissue that's holding all of this together. Actually, what the green is showing us there is showing us some transverse sections through bits and bobs. Anyway, that's the white matter. We can talk more about the white matter, but we kind of need to link it to the gray matter to see where we are. So, um, <laughs> right, can you, first of all, I guess we should compare and contrast the white matter and the gray matter, shouldn't we? So we can see that, that spur of gray matter there in the middle, and then over there is the white matter. So that's the white matter, that's the gray matter. Uh, so the gray matter then, if we zoom in a bit, in the gray matter, we don't see lots of myelin because here we have connections. So we have neuron cell bodies, little dendrites poking out of them, and they'll be receiving inputs from other neurons and their axons will be running out from here. So here you don't want myelin, you don't want that insulation, you don't want those nodes of Ronvier. Uh, in the gray matter, there's there's there isn't any myelin because uh, this is not where we find the axons. So now we're zooming right in. Look, a bit bright. There, that's what the grey matter looks like. And then that's what the white matter looks like. So if I go to the edge, there's the edge. We can talk about the edge later. There's the white matter. There's the grey matter. So in the grey matter, we're seeing neuron cell bodies. Uh, and in the white matter, we're seeing axons running up and down the spinal cord. All right, zoom back out again then. I'm not sure if my focal plane is entirely the same as the cameras at low power. Right, so what are we looking at here? Well, that's the middle there, that's the central canal, we'll come back to that. Um, that is the dorsal horn. Uh, I'm confident that's the dorsal horn, particularly on this side, we can see it pretty much reaching to the edge there. How this looks will vary a little bit depending upon the level of the spinal cord and the plane of section. Uh, for example, at the, uh, at the neck and the lumbar regions where you have the lumbosacral plexus and the brachial plexus, the grey matter can look quite different because you've got so many connections running out to the, to the limbs. It's so much busier. But there's the dorsal horn. And look, here, there's the ventral horn. And look how that's quite a long way away from the edge. This is the lowest power I can use, so hopefully you're seeing this. So there's the ventral horn and there's the dorsal horn. Now, the dorsal horn uh, is receiving sensory inputs from the body. So these are sensory neurons here. Now, the dorsal root ganglion is the collection of cell bodies for sensory neurons, and that's just outside the spinal cord, so we're not seeing it on the plane of section. But the dorsal root ganglion has sent axons out to sensory receptors on the skin around the body, and then it sends another axon back into the dorsal horn in here. So we're looking at sensory neurons. Actually, these are second order sensory neurons that are receiving sensory inputs from the first order neurons which are out in the peripheral nerves and then they are sending those action potentials off uh, through their axons which are then going to run in the white matter they're going to run up here that's what we're seeing up here so this is what the dorsal horn looks like take a look at that we've got 
We do have some very large cells in there. Let's. I'm, I'm being a little bit biased and focusing on these, literally focusing on these, these really big ones. Uh, where's me? Where's me thingy? Boom, boom. All right, a bit more light maybe. It's quite a lot of work going on when you're working with a microscope and trying to talk, isn't there? Um, so we're seeing some small nuclei in there, which look pretty normal, right? Um, so those are the glial cells, the support cells, the cells that are supporting the central nervous system, the small nuclei, they're kind of more normal cells. Whereas these bigger smudges, these are the cell bodies of the neurons. Look at that, that's a, that's a good one there, isn't it? So the neurons are large, and what we can actually see if we look carefully is we can see a nucleus, a large nucleus, because this is a very busy cell, and we can see the dark nucleolus inside it, that's the smaller circle, and um, much of the, this is the highest power I've got, isn't it? Much of the um, cell body is filled with granules. When we, when we look at this under an, uh, an electron microscope, which I don't have handy, um, we'd find that these are rough endoplasmic reticulum. So neurons are very active, very busy cells. Uh, uh, and that's what we're seeing in there. Um, so this is, remember, this is the dorsal horn. So what we're seeing is we're seeing some axons coming into the dorsal horn from up here. Now we're seeing the dorsal horn and then we're starting to see some neuron cell bodies And they look like that. That's the purpose of this video, to see what they look like. So that's the sensory input, that's the dorsal horn. The reason I'm bigging this up is because I want to show you what the ventral horn looks like. So um, how are you with your upper motor neurons and your lower motor neurons? So there's the, actually I should go for a lower power, shouldn't I? So we're super clear on what we're looking at. Right, so there's your ventral, uh, there's your dorsal horn, there's your sensory input. Then we follow the grey matter down, and now we're getting to the ventral horn of grey matter. And if I go down a little bit, you can see those streaks that are coming off it. So those are axons running away from the, the ventral horn. But you can already see how big the cells are in there. These are ginormous. These are lower motor neurons. Uh, so the lower motor neurons are the neurons that run from the ventral horn of the spinal cord out in the peripheral nerve to the skeletal muscles of the body. The upper motor neurons are running from the brain down the spinal cord to synapse with these guys. But look at that. Oh, wrong way. Let me make it brighter, not darker. Look at these guys. Aren't they awesome? There we can see a nucleolus. But look, there's real texture to that, the stuff in the cell body. And these are really, really big cells. So the lower motor neurons are bigger than um, the second order sensory neurons we saw in the in the in the dorsal horn. Um, and then you can maybe imagine how those axons are running out there. So we can see there are there are axons which we've cut a transverse section through, and those are running up and down the spinal cord. And then we've got axons, haven't we? Running. That's a good one. Look at that. So we've got axons running out from the ventral horn to the ventral root to form that spinal nerve. Cool. So we're looking at one of the large, we're looking at a couple of the large lower motor neurons there. And you see the, well, you see the lumpy bumpy bits? It looks like it's full of stuff. Those are known as uh, the nissel bodies. 
And like I say, that's the, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That there we can see. Just about making out the nucleus and the nucleolus and it's surrounded by nissel bodies. The space there is an artifact that's uh, caused by shrinkage of the tissue during sectioning or something most likely. If we're seeing gaps like we're seeing, we're, we're seeing there, they're not. You wouldn't see those in life. That's, you know, when we uh, prepare the tissue, if you've watched the make, how to make a slide video, when we prepare the tissue, you do introduce some of these artifacts by dehydrating and staining and sectioning and that sort of thing, right? Okay, so um, we commonly talk about the ventral horn and the dorsal horn and, oh, is this, um, I don't know. In thoracic levels, there is a lateral horn, which kind of looks what we're seeing there. So in the middle, right, in the, the lateral horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord in thoracic levels, that's where your sympathetic nerves come out from the central nervous system. So your preganglionic sympathetic neurons start there and then they run out through the ventral horn and then they go and find the, the sympathetic ganglia where the postganglionic sympathetic neuron will be and then will run off to a target. Um, that's, 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 that looks like a lateral horn, but I, I don't know how confident I am in uh, putting my name on that. Um, also, uh, we can further, so if we look at the, the neurons in the, the, say, the dorsal horn, they are arranged into lamina, they're arranged into layers, and those cells will be doing similar jobs, going to similar places. So there's further organisation in here, which is, which is described. But I think in the grey matter, the only two things left to point out are, um, well, that grey commissure, can you see that, that the grey matter crosses from left to right? So there's, this is an example of a decussation. We have cells, we have um, axons running between the left and right sides of the body in the spinal cord because some nerves cross over here and some nerves cross over later. It's all very complicated. Um, but this is the, the grey commissure or the central commissure here and it's next to the central canal. So the central canal we can see here and this is a continuation of the ventricles in the brain. So in there is cerebrospinal fluid. And look, you can see an epithelium lining that central canal. And that looks like a simple columnar epithelium, right? Because we've got one layer of cells. We haven't really done epithelium in detail yet, have we? Uh, we can see one layer of cells and they're quite tall. Now, these cells are normally ciliated. So there are cilia processes that waft the cerebrospinal fluid along. Um, and I can see a bit of an edge there, but I'm not gonna confidently say that I can easily see cilia here. Cilia are pretty, pretty tiny, so. That's way too bright. How have I made that so bright? So ependymal cells line uh, the ventricular system. They're very important. They keep the, the CSF away from the brain, essentially. So the, the, you know, like all the tissues of the body, the central nervous system has interstitial fluid. And the interstitial fluid is really important to neuron function. Uh, and part of what the microglial cells do is they manage that interstitial fluid, which so has got all the right components in it. Uh, and the ependymal cells, uh, they make a barrier between the cerebrospinal fluid and the interstitial fluid of the nervous system. And, uh, you know, large molecules don't pass across that so easily, where smaller molecules can do. That's looking pretty good on the microscope. don't know how well that's uh, been picked up by the video, but that looks pretty cool to my eye. So, central canal. Right. Oh, look. Um, there's a blood vessel. See, this is why we talked about blood vessels the other week, because we find blood vessels everywhere. The central nervous system is incredibly well supported by blood vessels. Loads of capillaries in there. Neurons are not very far away from, from a capillary bed. 
Okay, so if we go back to the white matter, so we can describe the white matter like we describe the grey matter as having dorsal horns and ventral horns and occasionally lateral horns. Well, I said that there's the dorsal horn, so this is the, the dorsal part of the white matter, so those are called dorsal columns. And yes, if you actually label and track those axons and see where they're going, they're also organized into layers. So these are broken up into more lamina, more layers, but those are the dorsal columns. So the neurons essentially, if they're going to the same place and doing the same sort of job, they run together. So we have then the dorsal columns, uh, we have the ventral columns, uh, and then we have uh, the lateral columns are between the the dorsal horn of grey matter and the ventral horn of grey matter, right? Uh, and again, we have also anteriorly, we have a an anterior ventral, an anterior or ventral, an, an anterior white commissure or a ventral white commissure. So again, we have a decussation, we have uh, a link between the left and right sides um, of the anterior columns. The reason I point that out is because what we can see here in this, this green line, this green line is showing us a, the connective tissue, there's actually a fissure running down here, separating those anterior columns into left and right. Um, so this is the, the anterior fissure. And if we look dorsally, there's often a little bit of one, but not so much here. So we have a, a ventral fissure, which goes all the way in, which is why you need that connecting commissure, the white commissure, and also that's what helps me determine ventral and dorsal. Whereas dorsally, that little, the little, it's like a little, little indentation would just be a sulcus, a little dorsal sulcus. And we're not seeing the same sort of connective tissue separating the two there. Talking about connective tissue, if we go to the very edge, that's what we're seeing there. And of course, the connective tissue that covers the central nervous system is the pia mater. So we're seeing pia mater there. That's the, the layer tightly adherent to the surface of the spinal cord. And then you'd have the other layers of meninges. You have the pia mater, and then the arachnoid mater, and then the dura mater. All right. So that's... Oh, look, there's a load of blood vessels there. Right, anyway, that's the layout of the spinal cord. I've got another one to look at, which I think is quite cool. And <laughs> the reason I was going to mention this one was I've been looking for sections of the brain, um, obviously for this histology series, and I forgot that we'd had... So um, when you work in the anatomy department of a medical school, People who literally have skeletons in their closets um, ring you up and say, I've got a skeleton in my closet. You have people who trained with skeletons. You've, old, you've, you've got um, old doctors who've retired and who've passed away uh, and their families are going through their things and they find skeletons that they use to train with in the attic and what have you. Uh, and they don't know what to do with these skeletons and, and this is largely regulated by law in the UK. So they give us a ring and we say, yeah, we'll look after it. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll treat it with uh, the usual respect and dignity that we treat all human tissue. And we also get people who find collections of things like pathology slides and histology slides and say, would this be useful? And it's like, oh yes, it would. And um, somebody asked us to look after these a while ago. And can you see the date on these sections? These are from 1937. Um, this doesn't have the same stain that we were just looking at. This is just a, uh, it says HEB on there, so it's just hematoxylin and eosin. I um, don't know what the B stands for. Um, but you can also see how tiny this spinal cord is. Well, I don't know what it's from, but let's have a look, just so that we look visually at another spinal cord and see that we can see the same sort of patterns and layout, all right? Also, it's from 1937, so what do you think it looks like? Is it in the same quality as it was when it was made? And of course, the advantage of this being a smaller section is that I might be able to fit it uh, under the whole low power slide. Oh, okay, so it's a bit... Oh, I, I can see it in my whole view, but I can't fit it all in the camera's view. But if we... 
we look under the microscope we can see that this looks as perfect as the day it was made and again we can see the grey matter we can see the large neurons in there we can see those large cell bodies and large nuclei and then we can also see the cross sections through the axons of the white matter and we can see the central canal the ependymal cells pretty cool okay so that's what the spinal cord looks like. That's what we mean when we talk about gray matter and white matter. The white matter, you've seen those axons going up and down the spinal cord and you saw the gray matter. That's where the cell bodies are. That's where the connections are happening. That ventral root, that's where those motor neurons are, those lower motor neurons, and they're sending their axons out from there. And the, 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 the dorsal horn, that's where the sensory stuff is coming in. And then we see the second order neurons, which pick up those action potentials and then take them into the white matter and off and, and up to the, the brain. So I hope, because it's hard to understand the anatomy of the spinal cord, I hope by looking at the cells, looking at the wiring, you find it easier to imagine that layout. The, um, um, the other cells in there, the neuroglial cells, sure there's more detail. Um, th these are cells supporting the central nervous system. And then also, like I say, the, the way that these neurons are organized into layers and laminae you'll read about, but th that's more detail to add on later. I just wanted to have a visual look at the spinal cord so you can see that it looks, well, so lovely and also, I hope, quite clearly laid out when you look at the cells. So those illustrations you see in textbooks will make more sense. Right. There's more central nervous system to do in the future. See you next time.